and welcome to Indianomics. Earlier this month, a U.S. company offered to supply power at four rupees sixty-three pice to the state of Andhra Pradesh. This event signals that solar power has now become nearly competitive with thermal or coal-based power. If power can be generated on our rooftops and that too competitively, are we entering a brave new world where power will be available minus the political and the grid problems that accompany a grid power? I have with me three gentlemen to discuss this issue. The Secretary of the Central Ministry of Renewable Power, Mr. Upendra Tripathi, Mr. Arvind Kumar, the Energy Secretary of the State of Telangana, and Mr. Suman Sinha, Chairman and CEO of Renew Power, a company which delivers solar and wind power solutions. But before we get to our guests, hear out a few facts. On November 4th, Sun Edison, a U.S. company, successfully bid to supply solar power to Andhra State at four rupees sixty-three pice per unit. Actually, nine of the 28 companies that participated bid to supply power below five rupees. This compares with bids of 11 to 13 rupees that one unit of solar power cost in FY11. Globally, solar power costs have fallen by 200 times. From hundred dollars per watt in 1975 to fifty cents per watt this year, analysts estimate costs may fall another fifty percent by 2020. Tony Seba, scholar on disruption and clean energy from Stanford University, estimates solar power has achieved grid parity in hundreds of markets and will achieve eighty percent parity globally by 2017. Costs of storage of energy have also been crashing at the rate of 16% per year since 2010. Tesla, Foxconn, and LG Chem are rapidly setting up battery factories. Tony Seba again estimates storage costs may fall to 1.2 dollars per day by 2020. Are we therefore reaching a stage when power will be generated and stored on our rooftops? or in our neighborhood and the average consumer will no longer be dependent on the politician and the babu for a power connection that's the question we are asking and uh, my guests once again let me introduce them are the secretary of the central ministry of renewable power mr upendra tripathi arvind kumar energy secretary telangana state and sumit sinha chairman and ceo of renew power a company which will delivers solar and wind power solutions gentlemen thank you very much for joining me and i hope at the end of the discussion we we ushered into the brave new world of solar energy uh, generated on our rooftops but uh, first uh, some uh, uh, jargon needs to be cleared sumant uh, you as the industry expert uh, we are talking of two different sets of power is it solar power which is generated in farms and that supplies to the grid and solar power generated by pv cells on our own rooftops both of them cost have come down below 5 rupees per unit no lata i would not exactly say that i think even the recent bid that you alluded to i think is far below where the market actually is at mm. uh, i would i would think that the proper pricing of solar power is still well in excess of 5 rupees if you properly cost all the risks um, of forex of execution uh, and so on mm. and uh, therefore you know 463 is an indicator mm. i think in general that solar costs are going down but i would not say it's come down to that level So that is point number one as far as where the ground-mounted utility-scale solar is at. Mm. If you look at rooftop solar, rooftop solar uh, pricing is just a little bit higher than where the ground-mounted uh, solar is at, and that, in fact, is in one way the beauty of solar. That even if you come up with much smaller size installations, the cost does not go up that dramatically as it might have otherwise. And so, if I look at the rooftop installations, the costs today are probably in the range of six rupees to six rupees fifty paise mm. uh, per, let's say, per rooftop installation. And of course, it depends upon the size and the nature of the roof and the orientation of the roof and so on. But I would say that uh, if you ask me honestly, I think ground-mounted solar is probably at about five fifty, five seventy, and rooftop solar is probably at the six twenty-five to six fifty level. Mm. Is where the pricing, the proper pricing with proper returns, with long-term sustainable business models. really would be at at this point in time okay uh, well uh, uh, that's the cost now but uh, sumant uh, we know that uh, uh, in the just in the last 5 years costs have fallen from something like 11 12 rupees per unit to uh, even that 5 550 that you are saying now uh, if you have to draw the graph further down 
to 2018 or 20, where will the cost go? So I certainly think, Lata, we are sitting on a, on the, on a sort of reducing cost curve. I think that in the earlier part, a lot of the cost reduction came because there's oversupply on the panel manufacturing side globally. And so cost crashed as a result of that. I think now we're at a point where demand and supply are relatively balanced and therefore prices have more or less stabilized. I think from here on, we're going to see price reductions happening mostly because of technology improvements of which there still will, will be quite a bit. And so uh, if you ask me, I believe that solar costs will keep reducing maybe at the rate of 2 to 4% every year. And if you extrapolate that over, let's say, a 10-year time period, then it is very conceivable that solar costs might very well go down by at least 30-40% from where we are right now. Uh, and I think that is quite possible uh, given the nature of the manufacturing efficiencies, the technology uh, research that is going on. So from that standpoint, you could argue that solar cost, you know, let's say 10 years out, could be at about uh, 350 to 4 rupees as well okay. in today's uh, rupee terms. Okay. And that, I think, is really where the transformational power of solar really comes in. Okay. Well, uh, let me get uh, uh, the, uh, the Secretary from the Central Minister of Renewable Power. Uh, uh, Mr. Tripathi, uh, what is it that your consultants and uh, your experience uh, telling you? Are they telling you that we have to wait for 15 years or... Uh, Given the uh, governmental push that, you know, 100,000 uh, megawatts should be generated through solar power before 2020, uh, given this kind of a government uh, uh, support, do you think we will advance this date? Well, uh, uh, what our consultants, uh, some of them tell us, uh, apart from the roadmap for 100,000 megawatt, which is a world record by 2022, uh, you know, two things that we actually miss in this debate about, uh, you know, grid parity, the price and cost. Now, what is hidden behind uh, this solar energy is the type of input we use and the future input cost. It is free, it is uh, usable, and the second thing is the impact on environment. For example, every one megawatt of solar that we put, either on the roof or ground mount head, there are 50 vehicles which are going off the road and in places like Delhi and all that where the, you know, the quality of air is bad, it means a lot. All right. No, I take your point. Uh, but uh, are you getting a sense that costs can fall faster? What are your consultants telling you? Will we see the bids go down from five uh, to below five? Yes. Uh, we, because, you know, the cost is a function of volume. Cost is a function of your capital cost, and cost is a function of where you are locating your solar plants. It is not uniform all over the country or all over the world. In some places, if the cost of capital is low, and the solar resource quality is high, and the scale is big, you will get ill, the prices will come down. And you correctly pointed out that the you know cost of storage is going down, the cost of uh, panels is uh, going down, and there are. R&D, very exciting R&D things are happening. If you get panels much more efficient than what you have today, suppose with nanoparticle or non-silicon based materials, the cost may further go down. So it is an exciting world to come, yes. Fair enough. Arvind Kumar, what has been the experience? Your neighboring state of Andhra Pradesh was the one that set this record, at least an India record, of getting a bid at 4.63 paise per unit. Are you likely to prefer solar over, or at least renewable power over non-renewable? Uh, I must say we are in very exciting times because as you mentioned that in Andhra Pradesh, the bid floated by NTPC got a record price of 4.63. Uh, let me uh, explain. Primarily because it was in a solar park, so it's at one location where land is provided, and then it goes directly in onto the grid. So the problems associated with land acquisition and other problems were not there, and that's why this price could be achieved. Secondly, the process of bidding, which was followed by uh, Ministry of Power was unique in the sense that it was put online, all bidders could see the lowest price and they kept kind of calibrating their price accordingly. So this is a new method and I guess it's going to be the future. In Telangana, last six months we have finalized two bids totaling about 2,500 megawatt and I must say in a year's time, last year our rate was 6 rupees 45 paisa per unit 
and this year in the latest bid of 2000 the lowest rate quoted is 5 rupees 17 paisa so we have already seen a decline of about 1 rupees 60 paisa just in a year's time and now the challenge for us is to uh, build transmission lines in accordance with the solar generation which is taking place because unlike thermal solar generation can take place in a year's time whereas if we want to add transmission line accordingly that takes about 18 months to two years so that's our challenge that we need to build infrastructure to take care of solar generation when i talk about telangana we have gone for reverse bidding where land is to be, to be acquired by private bidders so we what we have done is in our solar policy which was introduced in june this year we have provided certain uh, enabling clauses things like any land which is where solar generation is being set up is exempted under land ceiling act there is automatic deemed conversion to non agriculture usage they can apply in the single window clearance so what i am trying to say earlier they used to take about 8 months to 1 year time for getting all clearances now they can get within a span of 1 month so this extra 11 months they save on their cost working capital interest so all this adds up to lowering the cost. Fair point. Well, uh, I have to take a break on that note, but uh, I'm going to come back uh, to all my three guests and ask them what other kind of government incentives at the municipal level or at the state level or at the central level can be arranged uh, to ensure that uh, uh, solar power becomes even more competitive. Back in a minute.